here we are talking today about <clears throat> quality quarantine. And uh, when I saw this coming down the pipeline and about like, all right, we got high school prom. We've, we had 26 events in the, in the Rural Virtual Academy uh, that had to be canceled. And we were on target for a record-breaking engagement year, which is excellent because in the RVA, we're about relationships. Relationships, values, academics, in that order because it is in relationships. It is in developing a strong, cohesive <clears throat> relationship with anybody, whether it be friends, family, or your own, your own children. How that relationship grows is is really the journey that we are out to to to, to experience and, and quality quarantine is as we travel through we think to ourselves how do we get the most yield from our efforts and the challenges that we're faced with so I welcome you here to uh, a, a, an idea a discussion about quality quarantine uh, the uh, on the journey of becoming so tonight you know, there's three steps to growth uh, as we go through challenging times. I mean, if we are not experiencing challenge, we don't experience the changes because with change comes or with challenge comes change. In fact, there's a quote that I love and <clears throat> it has to do with the river. It's not the power of the river that cuts through the rock, it's persistence and being perseverant. And so in challenging times, we think of what it takes over long periods of time, what can actually be possible is just outstanding. It's, it's phenomenal. So we're gonna, I broke this up into three different uh, kind of terms here. So the first one, always most important, especially in relationships, is practicing compassion. Uh, the second phase is gonna be build, building competencies or tapping into your passions, uh, rediscovering that which turns the light bulb on. And, you know, if we have these light bulb moments, um, it renews us in our energy, it renews us in our spirit, and it, and it allows us to give from what we have been given. You know, but sometimes I think it's so easy to forget. You know, we kind of fall asleep, and, and it's not that we're actually sleeping, it's, but it's because we get so occupied with the things that are going on in our daily life. I mean, I'm, I, and I'm talking about stuff as simple as putting the dishes in the dishwasher or rinsing them off and putting them in the dishwasher, because you know what? It takes time, you know? Uh, the third is going to be about adopting new practices. So... What can we fill this new space we have? You know, it is in space that things are created. I mean, have you ever looked at a, a table in your house? And, and this is a fun experiment to do. Take, take like an end table or even take a wall. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what it is. But take everything off of it like a table in your house, take everything off of it. Maybe you've got a table that's got a bunch of stuff on it. Take everything off of it and just wait to see what fills that space. Or for another example, take a wall, take all the pictures off your wall, the ones that have been there for years and take all the things off your wall and see what ends up on that wall and discover, reflect on how that has changed your experience of where you are. It's really interesting. So adapt, adopting new practices. What is going to fill the space that we have been given? Because space attracts things. Okay, so it's interesting, isn't it? So hopefully in this discussion, we can begin to renew a sense, uh, re renew a, a sense of awareness for opportunities within adversity uh, there's a quote or there's a there's a saying uh, like optimism versus pessimism and a definition goes in line that optimists look for the opportunity in the challenge pessimists look for the challenge in the opportunity so hopefully uh, tonight we can have a little discussion we can have some things maybe some takeaways some aha moments some light bulb moments of 
renewing the sense of awareness for opportunities within that adversity and see and look for the best that we have in every single waking moment that we are here. Uh, develop a new sense of purpose and mission going forward because really the future is, it's, it's, it hasn't happened yet. You know, it's it's the new sense of mission. It's noticing that there is space ahead of us. See, the past, the present, and the future all happen simultaneously. So we can look to the future going forward is, you know, the, the, the term that I've used in this uh, bullet is going forward is the future. But really, when is the future created? The future is, is, is all about the opportunities and the, the future is being created right in this moment. It's, it's now that we take action that we uh, kind of begin to embark on our journeys in the direction we want to go. Sometimes, though, we don't know where we want to go, so we, we tend not to choose. Or maybe we don't realize we can choose. The moment is also when our history is created. So really, the most important thing we have is actually this second right here, right now. Because it is in this moment right here, right now, that everything happens. But tuning into your own personal GPS, you know, when you're moving forward down the line and you're going forward, it's always nice to know what's going to pull you forward. And passion really is what pulls you forward. And if you don't know which way, if you don't know where you're going, I mean, you kind of can go anywhere you, I mean, you kind of just aimlessly go. My mom, my mom says to me, she says, you know, if you don't pick a direction, you're just going to become like a cork bobbing in the ocean. And what happens to the cork as it bobs through the ocean? It kind of gets sucked into a current. It's it's influenced by its surroundings. And you get sucked into the current. And then all of a sudden you could find yourself like, you know, those, like you could find yourself in the sticks like somewhere. You could find yourself in a little bay that's stagnant. You could find yourself in the scum line. You know what the scum line is? It's where the hot water and cold water mix. And so all the debris goes there. Um <clears throat> So, I mean, I mean, sometimes you can find yourself in really good places, too, without making those trades. But we do have that internal GPS, and what we want to do is is we want to tap into that personal GPS and say, which direction are we headed? And, you know, um, and again, go back to, to creating our future, you know, filling that space and really going towards it intentionally. So setting the, tones for we setting the tone for weeks and months ahead. I mean, we become what we repeatedly do. Therefore, anything, as well as our excellence, is not an action, but it's a habit. It's what we do, like I said, in the moment. It's what we do without even knowing we do it. We need to reflect on that, what we do and don't even know we do. But it's going to set the tone for weeks ahead because we're going to talk tonight a little bit about routine and the power of routine. However, routine's kind of got two sides to it. You know, it's a, I like, I tend to focus on the positive of it, but we need to be, first of all, acknowledging what has routine done for us and has routine totally been, you know, turned inside out lately. And then lastly here, discovering new ways to personally grow. So, I mean, we could probably simply put it, discovering new ways to personally, become aware. Awareness is primal. Awareness to, to what we don't know leads us to knowing. Awareness is, is key to any uh, development, knowing what you don't know so that you can know. Uh, and then we can begin to create. So, um, yeah, I, I'll, I'm going to go, I'm going to move from here, but just to kind of give you an idea of some of the conversations that I really enjoy having, I, I think it's, it's, it's in these times. And, and first of all, you know, we're talking about uh, compassion. And compassion is um, it, it is key to everything uh, because it, it, allow, it builds into us uh, everything like forgiveness, uh, understanding. We don't have to know what somebody knows. We don't have to know, like we don't have to have that experience that, you know, that we know what they're going through. But we do have to have compassion in that people are struggling. Uh, we are all in, in we're, we're in a storm, okay, but we're not necessarily in the same part of the lake. So 
Compassion is key. So tuning into your emotional intelligence. We all we have we have an IQ, which is uh, the intelligence quotient, right? Which is an IQ. They also there's also the EQ, which is your emotional quotient. And they refer to this as the emotional intelligence. And it's the capacity to be aware, okay, recognizing the ability to control and express your emotions. Now, okay, and then to handle interpersonal relationships empathetically. But the capacity to be aware, control, and express your emotions kind of dials it right in. So we have these emotions. Now, um, one question I like to present with this is how often, I, we're, I, I think everybody has probably had experiences, but how often do we allow our emotions to dictate our behavior? Now, there's, we can think about that. How much do we allow our emotions to deem how we will act or behave? So for an example, my son, uh, he really likes to play video games, okay? And my daughter, you know, and of course, we allow him to play video games, and he really likes it. So we, you know, it's it's nice to have that. But when it comes to eating dinner as a family, we feel that it's very important that we come together and eat as a family. So <clears throat> we call down to him, hey, it's it's uh, time for dinner. Come on up, and, you know, we'll give him a four-minute warning. We never do, like, you know, oh come up right now, stop exactly what you're doing and have that expectation because that expectation won't be met. And then we get frustrated. Well, if I even give him an expectation that I'm going to be frustrated if he doesn't come up in four minutes, at what point do my emotions of frustration, because again, frustration stems from unmet expectations, I, began, I, get, I begin to become emotionally engaged in this uh, and, and it might be uh, a frustration, which... Frustration can lead to being upset. So at what point do I say, you know what, my frustration is not going to dictate how I treat him. My frustration will not be how I act because I need to be, I need to be concise. I need to be consistent so that I can develop into this, this you know, in this relationship. So... Again, emotional intelligence is, of course, to be aware and control and express your emotions in the pathway, in, in the direction of choice. Like, how are you choosing? Now, we can choose to respond. We can choose to respond uh, frustrated, which is then a, it's, it's going to act, it's going to serve as an extrinsic motivational factor because what we are doing, you know, to, to control a situation, you know, if we're trying to uh, be in any kind of relationship, whether it be with our kids or with our colleagues or anything. But <clears throat> the key is compassion and tying in to our emotional intention and asking ourselves, do we allow our emotions to dictate our behavior? And how do we move forward to handle interpersonal relationships empathetically? So practicing compassion. Now, it doesn't necessarily, it's not always easy but it is something that we can get better. So we are going to talk a little bit tonight, too, again, about growth mindset. And so I, I'll just drop that one here, but emotional intelligence and compassion. So I started to allude to this. I really like these pictures because it, it speaks a lot to actually what's going on. So here we are, you know, we're talking about quality quarantine. We're, it, I was sitting out by the fire a couple weeks, actually, well, four weeks ago, when this all started happening. And it dawned on me that the entire world was thinking about the same thing at the same time. Like, when's the last time somebody in, you know, South America was thinking about the same thing? I mean, we were all thinking about what is going on. And then they cut, then they shut schools down. And we're like, what is going on? Now, the people in the RVA probably, you know, the people in the RVA, they have a little different experience because they're used to their kids being at home and but there still is change I, I you know what I can't I can't tell you how many times people said oh I bet you it's the same for you I'm like well 
no, it's not the same for me. I mean, yeah, my job, I'm, I'm still coming to my office, but now I've, and you might have even heard some people stomping on the floor upstairs. And my wife is a first grade teacher and she's at, she's at home now. She's trying to figure things out. So she's working till 10 o'clock at night trying to get lessons ready, trying to figure out, you know, how to send a link so, you know, first graders can get into a Zoom meeting. So just imagine the chaos that's going on. But then, you know, I talk and, and I could even point here. So, you know, like maybe this is my life right here. You know, and then I talk to another friend who, it's him and his dog or it's her and her dog. And, you know, right now she's laid off, you know, but, you know, she lives close to, you know, she, she's got a different situation going on. But then I think about the people that are entrepreneurs, that are small business owners, that, their doors are shut. I have a few friends. They own they own some restaurants, and that is their livelihood. And right now, uh, oh yeah, and, and they're they just found out they're they're pregnant with their second baby about uh, two years ago. They had their first, or maybe even yeah, two years ago. So it's the same storm, but it's totally different boats. You know, we can see it from different perspectives. I, I look at the news and I look at people that are standing in line for, you know, thousands of people standing in line for food. I'm not in the boat where I, I can't go get food. So I, I, that's where compassion comes in to say, you know, I, I don't understand. I don't necessarily know what it's like to be in your boat, but I can, but I can have compassion. I can empathize with you. So we are facing the same threat. We're, we're, we're working. But what does that mean? That means, too, that we have opportunity within this adversity. There is, the landscape has changed. So I think it's an interesting uh, metaphor that same storm, different boats. And why compassion and leading with an emotional intelligence? Because you know what, we see a lot of things out there that we might not agree with. I don't know about you, but I see a lot of things out there. I'm like, what is going on? Those, they have different perspectives. Everybody has a unique perspective. And I think the thing that comes to my mind is, Compassion leads to honoring the difference of people and just realizing that it is about survival. It's about adapting to great change. And so tonight, hopefully, we can say, well, what is possible for us? What is possible? What is possible? We've been given this space. We've been given this time. You know, we've been given this space, like I said, clear off a table and see what attracts to it. Take off pictures off your wall and put them on a new wall and notice how you see the picture differently. And, and I really encourage you to do that. Maybe just change the pictures. Take a picture that you've had on your wall and go put it on a different wall and like maybe swap pictures or put something else there and notice how you will see it much brighter. You will see it with a new perspective and perspective gives way to what you see. And then, you know, we think to ourselves, what we see, really, repeated thoughts, what we see, we, we tend to, we believe. And when we believe, we behave differently. And when we behave differently, we have a completely different experience, which we wrap up as our reality. So, do our emotions dictate our behavior? How do we shift perspective? and identify or become aware of the opportunity that is in our presence amongst this adversity. You know, I, I mean, I don't know that I'd like to be in this boat right here. This is going to be a different, it's going to be a different magnitude. But um, yeah, it, there's possibilities. There are possibilities. So on that, you know, talking about compassion, leading with compassion, uh, for others, uh, but and acknowledging these emotions that we have, becoming aware of our emotions, our emotional intelligence quotient, our, our EQ, acknowledge emotions and others. And I thought this was a cute picture. But being aware of your emotions and understand the impact that they have on everybody, you know, and I on us, you know, like on the people in your life. And, you know, it, it can be bad, but you know what, it can be good. I, you know, it's easy to understand that it could be bad, 
you know, I get frustrated, I get angry and I discipline and I, oh, I get into an argument and, you know, we spiral out of control. But you know what? On the same rate, it can be really good. And understand that your emotions has an impact. You never, under, you never really know the true impact you make. And the, and the picture that comes to my mind, actually, when I say this, the picture that comes to my mind is, is the ripple effect. We don't really understand the impact of our emotions or, and let's see if I can, if I can grab a picture real quick. Oh, here it is. I always like to just bring up pictures, but our emotional experience can have a positive influence, not just on this little epicenter, but then this person, it affects this person, and each person, each ring is a person. And then this person, you bring, you add joy maybe to someone's life, and then here's the next ring, and, that's, and that joy is brought to another person, and then that joy is, it's come almost like that, that one game, you know? like where you pass it on, and it just goes out and out and out. Inspiration. In fact, I, I did a song, actually, and I wasn't going to – I didn't bring this in, but I sang a song the other day, and the reason it was – the reason I sang it is because I saw somebody on social media, they sang a song, and I was reading the comments about, oh, thank you, this is what I needed to hear today. Well, that person never knew that I watched it. Well, I ended up like, I did like it. That person never knew, though, that it inspired me so greatly to, to learn a song and then to share it. And that song went out, and it influenced a lot of people. And I don't really know what my song did for people, be, you know, so the truth of it is, it started with that one epicenter. And I don't know where she got inspired, but let's just say it started with her. It moved to me, and it moved now to, you know, a thousand other people. How many people were inspired in a good way? We never really understand the impact that we have on one another. So be aware of our emotions and use them as tools, like warriors, because we can impact people. We have the opportunity to to make such a big difference no matter what we're doing. If we're teaching a math class or if we're stocking the shelves at the grocery store or maybe we're just going into the grocery store and we see a, a guy there wearing a mask and he's got rubber gloves on and he's just putting the carts away and you say, hey, have a great day. You know, I know it's kind of scary to go into grocery stores nowadays. I got, you know, there's a little bit of uneasiness going there. But work through emotions, choosing calm thoughts when possible. Uh, and I say calm, I, I, I kind of mean like, you know, step back and recognizing sometimes the chaos that's going ahead of us. And what that does, it allows us not to step into it. And to get kind of caught up in it, right? So your emotions set the stage for others. And really, we are modeling this, not only for the people in our lives, but how about our families, for our kids, how we respond. How, and we're going to talk about response too, but listen and hear. Um, who was it? Uh, and and maybe, you, maybe you, somebody here knows, but there's somebody that said, Listen more than you speak, because when you're speaking, you're only saying something that you already know. When you listen, you have an opportunity to learn something new. And I think that's pretty profound. I'm like, I, I cause I have to, I have to hone it back a little bit. Sometimes I get a little excited, but listen more than you speak because you just might have an opportunity to learn something. So I like to give and take on that. I, I try to err on the side of, you know, 50-50, but <laughs> that's a good goal, right? So, again, talking about co compassion is key. Uh, focus, okay, so let's see what, if, if this jumps out at you. Focus on what you can control ver versus what you cannot. I, I, there's a blank screen here. But before I, before I click on it, and I'm thinking you might anticipate what's coming next. 
because this made this little statement right here made me think of one thing and one thing only and it's I, there's all this stuff going on around us during this you know safe at home and life has kind of been turned upside down everything's changed and <clears throat> I, I think to myself uh I, what can I do? <laughs> really? Like, I, there's nothing. I can't. I can't change what David Muir says on the news tonight on ABC. I can't change. I can't change what anybody says. I can't change what anybody does. I do have the power of, you know, becoming involved as a as a citizen. But what can I control? All right. And then so, grant me the ability or the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and then the wisdom to know the difference. So we are, we have, there are certain things we have to accept that we have to be in a place of acceptance of things we can't change. But then again, and now this is stepping us into, this is when it starts getting good, the courage to change things. Like I said, right now we're given space we're given we're giving an open table a clean slate we're given an empty wall what do i do with it grant me the courage to change the things that i can or to make the impact with the tools that i've been given so i i i think this ends the first the first part of our session here which is again compassion is key and I, let, I, I want to ask you a series of questions. Now, I don't know if you have a pencil and paper, but I'm going to ask you some questions here. and Or just feel free to answer them in your head, too. But what you focus on will expand. And so this is going to be a little bit of the power of thought, too. And we're going we're gonna to kind of tune into what resonates with us internally when I ask these questions. So the first question that I want to ask you, what am I grateful for today? What are you grateful for? Today? And I'll give you like 10 seconds for each one. I got a few of these. Okay. Next question. Who am I checking in on or connecting with today? Think about uh, think about when somebody connected with you today, or think about when the last time somebody did connect with you. Have you, you know, like an old friend called you? I want you to think about the impact that you make or have the opportunity to make. By thinking about what you felt like, what that emotional experience was for you, and that we have the opportunity to do the same. We have the uh, opportunity to give in this time, this space that we have. Who am I checking in on or connecting with today? Now, you might say, well, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe you're saying, well, who can I check on? Who can I connect? Because this is the this is remember that we're talking about quality quarantine it's about uh, it's, it's about a journey of what's possible to live the best life possible during adversity where is the opportunity within the adversity so who am I checking in on it's an opportunity how does that in, in influence their life next one here what expectations of normal will I let go of What expectations? Remember, unmet expectations lead to frustrations. So if I let go of expectations, essentially, I'm letting go of many, uh, many frustrations. What expectations? 
And I like this one because I have to ask myself, I have to get myself out of the, the basement here. How am I going to get outside today? You know, sometimes I think it's always like, oh, I got to get outside to work or I got to get out. How are you going to get outside today? Because I think getting outside, if, if I mean, we are fortunate, I think, in this in this state um, that we are not like a high density. Now, if, if you're calling in from Milwaukee and you're in the middle of Milwaukee, that's a different story. But I think we still can get outside some way, shape or form. So that's another question I like to ask. What is the opportunity that we have to live quality quarantine? How am I moving my body? Movement. And then maybe those two can go together too. How am I getting outside today and how am I moving my body might be one and the same. I'm going for a walk. And I'm going to appreciate for those things that I'm grateful for. And I might just call my mom or my dad or I might call an old friend. And you know what? It wasn't normal to do that before, but now I have a new normal. So I'm going to let go of the old because now I have the time. I have the space to create. And then lastly, what beauty am I either creating, cultivating, or inviting in today? And I want to focus on that first one, creating. Because there is beauty in compassion. There is beauty in empathy. There is beauty in listening. There is beauty in understanding. There is beauty in change. Because within that change, within that challenge, we cultivate a new experience. Or a new experience finds us. And we, leave our door. we can open our doors to it and we can invite it in. Or we can say, no, I want it to. I want to be stuck where I was, or I want to go back to where I was because that was comfortable. So, what beauty am I creating? So, these are great questions. I think that I don't know. They just kind of, they felt really good to me. So, I'm like, all right, that's those are good questions that I want to present to you. And if you want those questions, you can email me. I can get those to you, or you maybe written them down or taking a screenshot. But these are six great questions to ask yourself every day while we are in the position we are in. What beauty am I creating? Little did that person know who sang the song and posted it on social media knew that I would see it and it would inspire me to do it. And she was the ripple. So I think that's pretty fun. And, and, and you know, the fun thing is that we have this opportunity. Every one of us here has the opportunity to, to do that, to make something happen. And it brings joy. And so uh, I think the second now, and now that we're done with our first compassion, lead with compassion, the second thing that I want to talk about is moving from where you are to where you want to be. So it's, it, it's, it's really hard to think about. I mean, we can see where we are. We, can, we know our experience. But the hardest question that I've ever uh, faced, and I think a lot of people do, is where do I want to be? Where do I want to go? It's pretty good right here, you know? I mean, I guess I would change a few things. Where do I want to be? So we're going to talk about, you know, building competencies or, you know, uh, I would, I would, I wouldn't going to say get out of, I mean, I don't want to jump ahead too far, but Maybe push ourselves to get outside of our comfort zone. But before I get to comfort zone, I want to talk about the power of routine. So the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Okay, the secret of your future. Remember, the future and the past are coexisting. They happen at the same time because it's all in the moment when everything's created. It's in, it's in the moment that... You know, I make a decision that becomes my past, and that decision leads me to my future. So the secret of this future is being told to me in what I do. Now, remember, if we just go back a little bit, one page here, what beauty am I creating? How am I moving my body? How am I getting outside? What expectations am I going to let go of? Or what expectation, what new expectations can I put on myself? So we have 
a routine. All right, so so I, I, and I want to I want to remember that I've got you know I, I didn't ask a whole lot of questions here so far, but it's been more like hey think thoughtful questions, and that's why I hope you're walking away with something already that's percolating inside of you. But are you experiencing a new routine lately? I mean, I can tell you uh, my routine. <laughs> I'm staying up to like eleven o'clock at night. I never stay up till 11 o'clock at night unless I'm DJing on the weekends. And oh my goodness, my routine has changed so much. I'm like, well, but I'm still getting up at seven, you know. But how many of you here have experienced some change in your routine? Same way, new way, <laughs> right? Almost like we're in, yeah, we're in like a, it's like we're in this tornado. It's like, what in the world? And the faster we get back to, you know, the faster we find a new routine. See, our routine has been completely turned upside down. You know, like even going to the grocery store. I mean, what else? Like nobody's going out for fish fries on Friday nights anymore. Maybe you're doing takeout, you know, if, if you can do that. But honestly, I... My routine, like uh, the first thing, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I, I, I look at my wife, I say, so what are we having for dinner? What should we get ready? What do we got to pull out? You know, do we got to get something ready? Do we got to make some bread? Do we, you know, what needs to be done? We already start planning our day the second our eyes open up because it's something so new. That was never a conversation we used to have at 6.30 in the morning. So right now we're in this midst of kind of a chaotic time of, not just what's going on in the world, but what's going on in our own lives. So again, dialing it back in, quality quarantine. Routines are powerful. So getting into a routine, deciding on a routine, getting into a routine uh, and making a choice of where you, where you want to go, in what direction, in where are you heading? What are you, what are you able to do with this opportunity of new space and time that we have? And I, and I never really thought of this until I was putting these slides together, but routines also have a way of turning into our comfort zones, which is kind of what we do it for. You know, there is a routine. Uh, routines, they are, they're, they are comfortable because we know what to expect when we do it. You know, input, output. All right, so I want to I wanna show a couple pictures of, and this is something that I talk about, and I've got a couple different things here. Um, yeah, routine of drive up, grocery pickup. You know, it's like ha have a nice day, right? So move between the zones. So here's a nice graphic that kind of shows you um, where we might be in the in that routine. You know, we get into this comfort zone. And the, the way we move in the directions, you know, you're moving from where you are to where you want to be. I think right now, actually, it's kind of, it's, it makes sense to um, try to find a comfort zone. And maybe we have found one slightly in uh, the last month, but that doesn't mean we cannot continue to move in the direction we want to be. I, I don't necessarily believe that we should just settle for the routine that we have, even, even right now. I say to myself, how can I improve my routine? And you know what else is going to change in, in 25 days or in 31 days, whatever that is? It's going to be June, and we're not even going to have school to, to rely on upon for um, for, for uh, any type of like, I guess some of us might, but like school is going to be out. Swimming pools, you know, our local swimming pools will be closed. The beaches might be closed. Uh, travel will be down. We're going to have to continue to find new routines. So we have to find something, but find out where we are. You know, we might be living right now in the fear zone, whereas, you know, we're finding excuses for not doing things or we're maybe lacking confidence. And then we move in through the learning zone. It's when we get out of our fear zone that we get into our learning zone, which deal with challenges and problems. We acquire new skills in the learning zone. We extend our comfort zone. And then we move a little further and we get into the growth zone, which is finding purpose. We 
live dreams in this growth zone. We set goals. We set measurable goals, and we see them come to fruition. We conquer the objectives, and this is ultimately where we want to be. But, you know, we got to go through a lot to get there. Now, let's apply the same model to quality quarantine. So the question is, we don't have necessarily, we don't have the comfort zone right now. You know what I mean? Because it's kind of been turned upside down. So we're all in this blob of like total newness, but we have the opportunity to make choice, to move in the direction we want it to be. Where do you want to be a month from now? Who do you want to become a month from now? Who do I want to be during now? And there's the opportunity and the challenge. So, okay, of course, we can live in the fear zone, right? So we live in the fear zone. We, you know, we can grab all the toilet paper and everything that I don't need, but I'm going to stock up uh, because I'm afraid that, you know, what is, we're going to run out. I can spread emotions related to fear and anger. I, my emotions impact people. Remember, we are... We're talking about emotional quotient, emotional intelligence. What are your emotions? Are you letting your emotions dictate your behavior? I can complain. I can, I can be like, I can be out on social media and I can be complaining about everything that's wrong in the world and how, you know, but remember, go back to that serenity. Grant me the serenity to change the things I can and to accept the things I can't and the wisdom to know the difference. I've complained a lot in my life, and I'll tell you, complaining never really helped me out much, you know. I forward all messages I receive, you know, fake news. <laughs> you know what I mean? That one's kind of funny. I get mad easily. You know, remember, mad is just a cover-up of hurt. So do our emotions dictate our behavior? Are we in the fear zone? Are we living in that fear zone? Or are we in the learning zone? Let's just consider the learning zone. I start to give up what I can't control. I start to become aware that, you know what? I can't do anything about what somebody else says. And it doesn't reflect on me just because I heard it. And I think sometimes we can, get a, we can get a little bit offended when somebody says something that we don't agree with and we get angry at that person. But really, it does not... It has... It has uh, little to no in, like influence on our lives, you know, from a personal standpoint. I stop compulsively consuming what hurts me from food to news. Okay, so we're, again, we're in the learning zone. We're not acting upon compulsivities. Okay? I, I identify my emotions. Notice how important that is. You know, do my emotions control my behavior or do I choose? how I want to respond to the current events. I become aware of the situation and think about how I act. My dad used to, I, I tell you, my dad used to say this to me, he goes, oh, I don't care what you, on my report card. That was like third, fourth grade. On the report card, if I got any bad scores, he's like, you know what? I know you're doing, I know you're doing the work and you're trying. He says, but if I ever see a check where it says lacks self-discipline, he says, then you're going to be stacking wood with me, <laughs> right? He's talking about lacking self-discipline. Become aware of a situation and, and, know, and, and think how to act, right? Well, self-discipline kind of fits into that. Self-discipline is the act of doing something when you don't want to do it, right? So in any situation, become aware of that situation and make sure to think about what you want that to look like. Don't let your emotions control your behavior. I evaluate information before spreading something false. Okay, there's the fake news one. <laughs> I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna just push out messages. I mean, how many times could I have given somebody a, a phone number to say because they're looking for an extended warranty on their car? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. I recognize that we are all trying to do our best. Compassion. We, we, you know. Some of us might be a, a, a doing better than others, but that doesn't that just gives us an opportunity to help somebody. And lastly, and I love this one. This is this is the this is the uh, pinnacle is the growth zone. 
is I think of others and I see how to help them. I recognize, I recognize that that man pushing the cart at the grocery store feels loved when we say thank you. That man there or the, the, the person at the cash register, said, you know, when you ask him, you know, how's your day going? I hope you have a wonderful weekend. It's just little gestures. It doesn't have to be like I'm going to give them a million dollars, but they will be impacted by the compassion. Make my talents available to those who need them. You know what? Make my talents available. I needed them one day when I watched a girl sing. She inspired me to share out a song that I wanted to sing. Make my talents available. I mean, I can't, well, I, I, I could if I wanted to spend time learning to make masks, but I don't, know how, I don't have a sewing machine right now, and that's just not my talent. Somebody else might have that talent. I like to sing, so I sing, you know. Share, share, give from what you have been given. Growth zone, I live in the present and I focus on the future. You know, they say about the past, you know, in your past, present, it, it causes this, but the reason why the front windshield is so big and the rear view mirror is so small is because you need to be spending more time looking ahead of you to where you are going than what happened in your past. Focus on the big windshield and just watch life come at you. But you still have to make decisions to use your blinkers and you still have to, you, you still have to, drive the car you still have to turn the wheel you know so it, it, isn't that something it's it, isn't that something uh tracy it's the windshield is so big we have so much more to see that's coming don't spend time looking in the rear view mirror you might get into an accident anyways doing that um <clears throat> i thank and i appreciate others i give i i, I i'm grateful we offer gratitude. What are we grateful for today? I appreciate that that lady that's checking me out at the grocery store. Like she's actually checking my, you know, she's she's taking my milk and orange juice and and pushing it across there. And I, I tell you, she's like 80 years old. The la the lady I work with. I keep a happy emotional state and I spread hope. Think about where you would be. Think about what you're focused on. You're not focused on fear. You're not focused on everything that's going wrong. We're focusing on, I mean, we might be a little hungry, but we still have one another. I look forward, I, I look for a way to adapt to new change. A, adapt. You know, it's not survival of the fittest, actually, as much as, you know, like, what is it? Social Darwinism is survival of the fittest. I think of it more as it's not it's not survival of the fittest as much as it is the ones who survive are going to be the ones who adapt to change the quickest. Doesn't matter how big and strong you are. Doesn't matter how little and weak you are. We have the mental capacity to adapt to the change that we are facing. So those who adapt faster will see the development um, of, well, so those who will survive. <laughs> I, and I don't want to say survive. I want to say those who adapt to change will have, uh, what, what would I say, less, um, <clears throat> less pressure, perhaps, going forward. Not hoping for it to go back to the same, but looking forward in excitement to the future. Um, practice quietude, patience, relationships, and creativity. Remember, quietude, listen more than we speak because it is in listening that we have the opportunity to learn. Speaking, we only are speaking from that which we already know. Practice patience. Some people might not necessarily be there. We have compassion and we forgive. Relationships, we want to practice relationships. We want to practice being the influence, making the impact whenever and wherever possible. And again, creativity, give from what we've been given. Make my talents available to those who need them. So moving between the zones, and you kind of know, and I didn't really write this down anywhere, but when you are moving outside of your comfort zone into your fear zone, you're going to know that you're on that border 
you know you're going to be moving through a fear zone if you've ever felt your heart get nervous. You know, have you all like had an experience where you had to like maybe talk in front of someone or you had to apply for a job or interview or maybe you had to, you know, give an hour, you know, mentor series presentation and you get a little bit nervous, you know, and your heart kind of races a little bit or, well, you are, you are when your heart, like you get sweaty palms, you, you just get a little butterflies. Maybe you experience butterflies in your stomach. Actually, I had a friend that whenever he got nervous or he was kind of moving in, he was moving through his fear zone so he could get to his learning zone. He would yawn all the time. He yawned. So you're moving from your, when you're moving through, that's going to be challenging right here. Okay. But then when you get outside here, then you start to really, you know, and we, we are here. We are here for a lot of things, but certain areas of life, we're still in here. So this isn't just like a one this is multifaceted in your life. I mean, you might be in the growth zone with certain parts of your life, but in some parts of your life, you've been sitting in that comfort zone. You know, does that make sense? So it's not just like a one-way street, you know, like you've got all sorts of different things that are going on. So reflection, deep reflection allows you to become more aware of these things, but we wouldn't realize that, hey, we are moving through a fear zone when we get butterflies in our stomach or sweaty palms. And it might be sweaty palms if I make my talents available. If I sing a song on social media and I post it out there, yeah, yeah, guess what? I, I, I had to get through my, my fear zone because I was going to be affected by other people's opinions. You know, I lack confidence. I didn't think I was, you know, I don't, who wants to hear my voice sing, you know? Right? Yeah, different parts, um, different zones, totally. Yeah, so this is it's 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 multi-dimensional. You know, am I making my talents available? I think you know, my th I I appreciate it. like I'm like wow that that person who inspired me. I say thank you to them. In fact, you know what I did is I, I had the opportunity to talk to talk to her mom, and I told her mom I said I want you to know I think your daughter has done an outstanding job, and I want you to know how she inspired me. And you know what I mean? And it's like. Wow, what a difference it made! Not only for the for the for the daughter that probably heard it from the mom, but how proud of a moment it was for the mom. So be be the what be the change you want to see in the world. Like we have the opportunity every single day to do this, and I think I boy, I don't know how much I planned here for tonight. <laughs> so oh boy. Uh, I talked a little bit about the edge of the comfort zone, which I did do because, um, but we got to think about comfort zone is, is, is nice, but really everything we've ever wanted is on the other side of fear, right? We're, and I, I'm not going to get into the, sometimes we're trained to accept our comfort zone, but we, we are just like the elephant, you know, this elephant right here, look up, um, elephant being tied to the stake. That little stake right there is holding this elephant because from a young age, they actually tied this big elephant up to a tree or a stake that looked just like it. And so what that elephant tried pulling away when it was young, but as it grew older and older, it gave up and it stopped moving outside of its comfort zone. It stopped trying to get away. And now it just sits there. It accepts it. It accepts that it can, you know, we train ourselves that way too. So this this is actually is a link to a really good article, and I, um, I I'm not gonna like go through it right now, but it, it, it I'll have it in these things. But here are three reasons your comfort zone can actually kill it can kill the spirit. It can make you it can be keep you captive in your own. If this opens up here, so three reasons. Three reasons your comfort zone is killing you and how to beat it. So I, I put this in here because I thought it was, it's basically, and I'll just give you kind of a synopsis here. It keeps you from growth. It keeps you out of the growth zone. It's keeping you from trying new things. It's conditioning you to settle. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. That's in here. Uh, but it's a good article. And, you know, we did the growth mindset talk, but just to, if, if it's a new word, so embracing growth mindset, it's saying, I don't know how to do something yet. I like to try new things, but it comes down to the conversations that we are having. In our, oh, I can't, I'm not good at math. That's a fixed mindset. I'm not good at math. How many of you believe you're not good at math? Well, how many of you are really practiced and tried being good at math, right? 
well, I did you know, 20 years ago. Well, have you done it again? So do we still believe that we are, are not good at math? You know what? If I, Just think of a two-year-old said to their mom, you know what? I'm just not good at walking, mom. I'm not, I'm not walking. You know what I mean? So kind of a short, <laughs> make it short. Growth mindset is, is failure is an opportunity. Fail forward and fail often because it is failure is the first step that you take towards success. If you're not failing, you're not trying. So the current environment is filled with change. Change is hard. Resistance is sometimes fear-based. Okay. Oh, yep, take care. Um, be the role model for learning. Be visible and transparent about your own growth goals and set expectation that learning is a priority. So I'm actually coming just about to the end here, and I, I guess I could go about I could go on this here, but but events response outcome, I love this because results don't lie. The outcome will never lie. You can see what's coming at coming toward you. And what's coming toward you, the results. Here's our events that are happening in life. Let's call this, <laughs> this these are light bulbs, but let's call this uh, COVID-19. An event happens in our lives. This is here our response. This is where things happen because this is where our control is. This is where our power is. It's our ability to respond. And when you put response with the events, I am responding to the event in, you know, I'm, in, in, uh, I'm responding to the event of whatever it is. It could be COVID-19, safe at home. It could be I got into an argument or somebody's coming at me, whatever it is. How we respond is in our control will lead to my outcome. How many times have we gotten into, you know, an argument came at us and we argued back and the outcome was devastating and we lost a friend. What if a person comes in and is arguing with us and we just listened? And now we become better friends. So this is a power equation here that I, I really like. So events plus response equals outcome. And we have an ability to respond. And you know what that is? Our responsibility, right? I always tell my kids that I'm like, you have an ability to respond, Enzo. <laughs> You have a, an ability, ah, oh, dad, it's my responsibility. I'm like, yeah, it's your ability to respond. How are you going to respond to get the outcome you want? Because the results don't lie. Right now, you are, who knows, you know, maybe you're not, you know. So adopt new practices. So main, the main point, and I, this is, um, isn't that beautiful? When yeah, listening can save so many relationships right? So the main point, I like this. This was an acronym that a friend gave me. The main point, let's just remember here, mindset, identify perspective. How do you see what is being delivered and identify where you would like to be? So what is your mindset? Identify your perspective. Perspective gives way to what you see, where from where you see or what you see, sorry. Perspective is from where you see. Perception is what you see. What you see will ultimately become what you believe. What you believe will become how you behave. You'll behave around your beliefs. We all do it. I have a belief. I, be, I have a belief that, uh, you know, county markets got better hamburger than Triggs. So, you know what? I believe that. So I'm going to go to county market. My behavior shows that I believe that their hamburger is better there. I'm just making that up, by the way. So belief, behavior, experience, how I behave. I'm going to see people at County Market. My experience is I'm going to see different people than I would if I went to trade. So, again, that's my experience because it all started with perspective. What was my perspective that made me think that beef was better at County Market? My dad told me that. <laughs> so I just took it as fact. So shifting perspective, say, what if my be what if beef was better at Triggs? How would that change my experience? How would it change my reality? That's just one small example, but it can be applied to any thing. So mindset, attitude, how do you approach your day? What are you waking up? What's the impact? What opportunity do we have in the challenge in, these, in this adversity? Intention, lists. Making SMART goals. SMART is um, <laughs> it's uh, measurable, oh, yeah, specific, I forgot that. Specific, measurable, M, 
achievable, it's relative to my life, and it's time bound. Okay, so just to kind of throw that out there, it's just a measurable goal. Uh, development, ooh, I missed the C in there, sorry about that. Action items and measurable forward motion. So list out the opportunities that you have. When you wake up in the morning, look over and say, what are we having for dinner? That's like writing a list, you know, but we can compound that. We can add to it. Nurture, fill your cup and let the rest of the world benefit from your overflow. Do not move through this with an empty cup. So what do you need to do to fill your cup? If that's time for a walk to get outside, if that's time to read, if that's quiet time, if that's time to dance, if it's time to run, if it's time to what fills your cup? Because once your cup is full, you don't have to be empty to give because your cupeth will runneth over <laughs> and it will impact everybody around you. And choosing not to choose is a choice. So, I mean, kind of all bringing it together to live a quality quarantine, we've been given the space and this time. We have opportunity to be making an impact. Simply put, nothing dramatic, nothing huge. We don't have to like be writing songs like we are the world, but maybe calling an old friend Maybe wishing somebody well at the grocery store. Maybe maybe it's telling somebody you love them because they maybe haven't heard it. And, and maybe you haven't heard it for a long time and you know what it feels like to not have that feeling of somebody caring for you. But we have every day to do this in this time and in this space. And it's about who we can become. So who are we becoming on this journey of kind of unprecedented times. We don't know where this is going to lead and we don't know how long it's gonna last, but we might as well see the opportunity and the challenge. And with that, I, I conclude and say thank you for being here, interested in, in this opportunity of the Mentor Series. And I say thank you to Tracy for coordinating uh, this for an entire year and how many lives lives it it has changed because one person Tracy Moldenhauer said I wish I would have known this when when I was just starting the RVA hey Josh I really think we need to have a library for people if they want to learn about email let's get a presentation on email right so today we didn't anticipate quality quarantine but I appreciate you all being here and I hope that you're able to go and pass it on and brighten somebody's day. So thank you all.